Welcome, Welcome to the cage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had no idea that we were live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know either. We no. keep it natural in yeah. the cage. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, I loved yeah. your talk. Thank you. Uh, as always. And yeah. I think one yeah. of the things... Uh, Hello, Daniel. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Join Come us. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I think this last talk was actually perfect for um, for setting this up because one of the things that we were talking about, which is in line with what you talked you're about, very, was you're, security. You're very welcome to, to, to the, take contact the bad me because PR I have to go to that interview right now. Uh, I'll, I'll, then I'll be. Oh, oh. Yeah. we have a little Wait. microphone to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the bad PR that we're seeing with digital health, how how are we going to fix this? You know, we're talking about patient empowerment. We're talking yeah. about this. Yeah. How do we empower people? that don't totally trust the system. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think that yeah. the, the suppliers yeah. need to take a responsibility as well, because mm, there are bad suppliers, and you're seeing the also, there are you know, being manipulated or using uh, uh, in a context that you didn't yeah, really yeah, yeah, love. Men, men, uh, men it's going to be very challenging to yeah. generate that trust, because then yeah. it's not you know, founded so on, on so the so I think yeah. what's happening in this industry, yeah. as well as in the so financial yeah, so industry, is that you I see a lot of established we players. We want to use the information they have, they don't dare to do it, because they, they, are, they, are, you know, they, they generate in more in runs in on trust. Yeah. So there's then a lot of you know, startups that is, doesn't have that legacy, <laughs> so to say. So they don't need to, you know, uh, they can go further. You're seeing that in a lot of industries where you have established players and new, and new startups. Yeah, absolutely. Hi. Well <laughs> Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> Hi. 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 Nice to see you. We well. were actually building on, on your talk and, and really focusing on, on security and sort of the, the trust issue that we're seeing with digital health and the sort of the, the worst story or the bad PR that digital health is getting these days. Um, and uh, Faz, I, I also wanted to ask you about this because yeah. you, you're approaching at the beginning, so you have to think with the end in mind on this. Yeah, so, um, you know, there's, there's two sides to this. One is uh, the direct-to-consumer side of digital health, mm -hmm. and then there's the other side, which is more focusing on plugging directly into health systems, right? The health systems that, um, that we know of are already putting in place even stricter rules about HIPAA and about security and about privacy, all these things. So the companies that are trying to basically plug into health systems are meeting requirements that are even far exceeding what's required of the, of the government, okay? So that's one level of trust. So when you hear your physician tell you that I'm prescribing an app to you, that is also basically something we verified within our own system, that's a level of security and trust that you can have, right? Then there's the other side of it, which is direct to consumer. Question is, how are, are they going to basically demonstrate to the public, to the healthcare system also, that they meet the same level of requirements? And I think the onus obviously is gonna be on them to do that. So it's partly basically meeting the requirements, educating the public also about how they have met those requirements, and then continuously communicating that because it's just so critical that, uh, that the public does trust the information where, and where it goes. And why are we so, um, why are so many companies really reluctant to communicate and put out there what, what they're doing, what they're finding? Uh, I'm, I'm a researcher, so I say when you find something, you should talk about it. You should tell, tell everyone and really communicate. I'll just touch on that very quickly, and I think my colleagues probably have more elaborate answers here, but I think it's a focus issue. A lot of companies focusing right now on building product possibly generating revenue, although that's kind of a hindsight sometimes, uh, but building their product and essentially trying to verify that they have a business model and then raising capital. And it all happens at the same time. And somehow this requirement of focusing on privacy and security seems to be a, 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 a later thought. Definitely, you, you, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. You, you think about security when something happens. When something happens. Normally, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from a startup perspective. It's not very strange. It's the... It's the model, they don't have the resources, they don't have the competence, and they need to rush very quickly. So I think they're taking a much bigger risk than yeah. the mm -hmm. traditional industry does. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the consumers always, always understand that. No. <laughs> and that's, no. a, that's that, a challenge that's as well. Very true. Would you believe it's also a, a tactic that a company has uh, to not talk about these things in order to preserve their own company ideas or to protect them in, in such a matter? I honestly think, based on all the experience I've had over the years of dealing with entrepreneurs, mm. 
I don't think it is, a, it is the foremost priority. I think it is something that they will deal with, as mentioned, yeah. when an issue comes up. But I think on a, on a fundamental level, they probably build what they believe to be secure and private until someone breaks in and steals the data or something gets leaked out, right? Mm. But I believe fundamentally they're doing what they believe is right, but they're not necessarily going to that extreme next level of working with a, an institution that may charge them money and say, we have already hired a bunch of white hat hackers, we're trying to break in, you're totally solid, you're good, you meet HIPAA requirements, and mm. that's another level that takes them away from, mm. and a lot of times, by the way, they have to hire someone who's specialist in that mm. area, so the funding that they have may, I'm making excuses, it should not be, it should be the no. first thing that they do in healthcare, but um, th there may be an excuse that says, hey, I need to have a chief information officer or chief security officer to do these things, and I don't have funding yet, but when I get my series A or my series B, that's the first thing I'll do, mm -hmm. and let's just pray nothing happens. Okay. So I think that uh, a lot of consumers, they don't necessarily think about security and privacy because they don't feel the negative effects. Mm -hmm. But the, the interesting thing would be, for instance, if you take uh, Sund at uh, the site, so what would happen if, for instance, this got, got hacked and then suddenly you have a lot of Danish citizens, journals outside the... Then, you know, if, if that would happen, I think that would have a massive impact, especially on, you know, the, the healthcare digital industry in, in, in Denmark and in Sweden and in a lot of countries, because then suddenly people will start to feel the negative impact and then they say, what are we doing? Yeah. And they will ask the questions. So I think people is, is not asking the questions because they don't, you know, they yeah, don't feel yeah. they have to, but it could very rapidly change. Do you, do you agree? Issue. Yeah, I think I would, uh, I would tell uh, two stories. One story is uh, when we began uh, this in 2003, it was nearly a silent revolution. Uh, there was no debate in our government, there was no debate in the local governments about security and about handling uh, e-health data. We just did it. And uh, as, I, as, I, as I mentioned in, in my uh, presentation, Danish rely on the public authorities because they are paying the tax and they are raised in the schools and they love this welfare state. But then there has been a wave number two, and especially after some international scandals with NSA, uh, NSAR, and, and you know all those things you heard about Google, and then there has been a new uh, kind of focus and what has been very, very interesting for us uh, is that in our uh, research, which we are doing every year, uh, about how, and now it's more often, uh, but every year to, to, uh, to compare, is that during these years where we have had more and more international scandals, uh, then people in Denmark feel uh, the same level or even a little more secure about the way that the public healthcare sector is handling their data. So we are very happy about that, and we have to take care about that. Okay. And also, part of that story is that if there are failures, if somebody looks up data that they shouldn't, then we have a press release. Two doctors are found in the region of, 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 of um, um, Capital City. They are now fired, because they looked up data that they shouldn't. They are now fired. So we, l we make a lot of press, mm -hmm. and a lot of, of, of uh, making it uh, looking through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Transparency. Yeah. I remember the first time I did a transaction on <coughs> the internets. <laughs> I bought a book. I had to put my credit card number in there, right? But you know what I did to feel a little bit more secure about doing that is I looked on the back of my card and I went back to MasterCard. No advertisement there. But I went and looked and see what the policy was about fraud and if somebody actually stole my credit card. And I realized they said they are going to be responsible, right? And I, I need to worry only about the first $50 or so. But with healthcare, it's a different story, right? Who's ultimately responsible for the fact that they, they, they took my personal data? What is going to happen with that? No one can actually give that back to me. It's like stealing someone's identity, yeah. right? How do you give that back to them when it's gone? But, but the I interesting thing connected to that is that when you, when you started doing that transaction a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. that would be the case. Yeah, if, you, if you would read it today, mm -hmm. it's actually changing. Oh, okay. yes. oh, oh God. <laughs> because, you know, in the beginning of, you know, trying to make people going into internet right. and do stuff like that, 
you know, the banks, etc., they took a lot of responsibility because okay. otherwise you didn't dare. Oh my now God. you dare to do it. Yeah. So now they feel they can, you know, bring this oh, back. Oh, I have to read the card yes. again? Yes. Okay. <laughs> see a trend where responsibility is actually moving from the, the, the you know, traditional players over to the, huh. the individual again. Thank you. So, and I pe I'm not sure people realize this, that, but no. that's actually a, a trend. In our research, we have one question about should healthcare professionals in Denmark have even more access to your data? And then we are asking, what about if you are fainting out in another, uh, in, in another region than you, than you stay in? And if you ask those two questions, you can see that most Danes and a growing number, nearly 90%, means that, uh, think that, that healthcare professionals should have even more access to the data. Because if you are fainting out, you are okay. secure. So though people know about hacking, Though people know about international scandals, at the same time think, oh, it's better than that somebody could look up my data if I find out if I have an accident far from home. Wow. So worldwide, you can look up your data if you're a Dane, if you're on the internet. Mm. Huh? And, and, and every uh, doctor in the Danish healthcare system can, wherever you are in the country, look up your data. And it's, it's a really uh, good feeling of security. Mm. And it's much bigger than the the feeling of insecurity that somebody someday could hack your data. Huh. Yeah. Do you believe that the, the feeling of having your medical data available throughout the country um, and having that assurance that you are being hospitalized in an emergency situation is, is better for a person than the feeling of security that your, your data is not being misused against you? Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Um, because huh. what is it about all those data? You, you, we don't even know how many data Google have. We don't even know. So, so that, that part of the data that are in, 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 the, in the universe of public uh, health uh, care is so little mm -hmm. compared with what Google have about your habits for buying things. Yeah. So, no doubt. Mm. I want to bring up uh, just a quick question on kind of looking at the other side of this, but what about all the good things that have come out of uh, data being unsecure? I mean, computer science was born yeah. from hackers mm. originally, yeah. Yeah. and there's a lot of interesting research, there's a lot of interesting mm. insights that's coming out, but there's this stigma mm. that if people are using this data, uh, we shouldn't be talking about what they're finding out, and yet what they're finding out is actually quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. and th there's so many uh, very split up things in this, because if you go, for instance, to YouTube, you can't avoid looking at uh, people uh, when they're uh, uh, having children. People are uh, <laughs> putting a lot of films when they're having <laughs> children. A lot of films in hospitals. Yeah. It should be so private, but people like to show them up. So it, it's so, uh, there are so many paradoxes. Yeah. There's, uh, a, there's the, a lot of times you also see that, that people measure with double standards. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to your healthcare data, you yeah. are very, very careful. Yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. Yeah. people do not want to have their yeah. data outside. But when you're looking at all the social media uh, websites that are present right now. We don't care about the fact that our data is being sold to other people. We don't care that our WhatsApp messages are being sold to the highest bidder. And that is something that, that I oftentimes experience myself. I, I think, okay, I, I am a little bit afraid that my healthcare data is being shared, but I share everything on Facebook and yeah, on exactly, Instagram and exactly. everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, on on, uh, on Sunday, we have networks for people with the same uh, illness. Right. And we have one network for uh, children being ab uh, abused sexually. It's so hard reading. Mm -hmm. And they have the possibility to close it down so it's their own, it's private. But everyone who uses that site are open. Huh. Mm. They want to share, they want to help each other, huh. and they want somebody out there to get help in the future. I'm really crying when I'm reading that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Maybe there's a, a, so, so some of the security issues we've had has also led to concepts like using blockchain as a, as a method of real ultimate protection where packets of information have, have essentially wrappers around them and there's a lot of uh, regulation about what you can actually do with those little packets. I mean, are mm. you seeing that happening within the well, Microsoft uh, world? And yes, more discussions and of yes and no. So okay. there is an uh, incredible, I would say, hype mm -hmm. uh, surrounding yeah. uh, Bitcoin you know, this uh, Bitcoin and then the mm. blockchain. But you actually are not seeing the real projects that are very successful on I them. Uh, and, and that's kind of a paradox yeah. right now. People yeah. are trying to understand, is this really, uh, you know, is there real value here or yeah. is it, uh, or, or why are we not seeing the value right now? Yeah. But it's very interesting and there's a lot of uh, money going into those uh, 
products as well. There, there are lots of holes uh, within the data models that exist right now. There are lots of holes in the way that the internet is structured. Uh, our, our hardware also has major issues. I mean, there are other models that we could be using other than the current structure. So th it's a good point. There, there may be some other motivations out there for keeping it the way it is. So maybe it's also depending on the heritage that you're taking with you. That's, a, that's mm -hmm. possible. The history of. Possible. I so can't speculate. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we get into X-Files here, yeah. and, then, <laughs> I, and then we go <laughs> off the tangent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe it will so be very... I think, so, sorry. I think we're actually running out of time. Oh, but yeah. Just to sum up, I think uh, what we got out of this was really that it's all about um, innovation and technology, making things more secure, but also communicating uh, and being really transparent with, with what the security is. And good on you for making it a priority with your company and uh, also for Microsoft. And Faz always tells the truth. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Even when it's unpopular. <laughs> so thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank it's been you. a pleasure. And, thank uh, you so much. Thank see you, you next you. year. Thank right. you. Follow us on uh, Twitter, hashtag DHD16. Send your questions to Bastian. We'll be looking for uh, Twitter questions in the next session. So please send them through. And we'll be back in 15 minutes. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>